hey everybody. Hello. Hello. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everybody tuning in. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, it's Tuesday. And as always, you know what that means. It's time for another live live stream. And today we're going to go through our normal um, rundown. We're going to go through uh, recaps of what we did last week, talk about the live streaming schedule for this week, um, talk about the new features that were released. And um, well, there's nothing really upcoming that we can really talk about right now. So we're going to skip that. And then we're going to look at some community animations and then take a look at your questions. So if you've got questions, make sure you go ahead and drop those in the comments and we'll get to those at the end. All right. So let's recap what we did last week. Last week, JC had a creative stream. Uh, JC, you want to talk a little bit about that? Recap of yeah, what you did? Yeah, let me show you what we did uh, here. Oops. Okay, so last week... A moment, I lost it here. Um, yeah, uh, uh, we did, the idea was uh, create a, a simple robot like this and create an interaction where when you click each uh, button, the robot move to this place. So this is the animation uh, I did in the creative sessions. You can hear when I um, hit play. Uh, oops, one moment. Now, uh, this is the input. This is the steam machine. It's very simple. Only I create some animation, but the idea is each button have a number. Uh, this is zero, one, two. When I hit number one, Nothing happens when I have number two. Now, change to the next button, three, change to the next button, and one, go to the initial button. So, this is what I did in the creative session. Um, then I finished the animation here. You can see here. Uh, okay, this is uh, a little more complex, but um, you can see that the steam machine is more complex because now I have all the combination. Okay, so um, I create uh, the interactivity with the bottom using the listener. So now when I click here, you can see that the bottom move to this position, to this position, and I can move in different buttons. But the problem here is if I click here and I want to change here, I need to wait that the robot go here and change. So I create another uh, another ad board where I use the same animation, but I add some uh, transitions to mix all these animations. So now, when I click here, I can click here, and the robot change the position. That's cool. <laughs> so yeah, really all this is in uh... the in the community. You can see the three animations, and you can check the steam machine, and you can play with that. Yeah, awesome. And if you missed the live stream, don't forget there is a replay up on YouTube. I'm gonna yeah. Drop a link in the chat. So if you want to check that video out, you can. And then, like JC said, um, you can find the community file as well if you want to remix it, um, see how he um, see how he set everything up in addition exactly. to the video. All right, so that was last week. Let's talk a little bit about this week. Um, Michael is doing a creative session on uh, Wednesday, which um, uh, for most of us is tomorrow, um, unless I don't really know how the international time stuff works so maybe you're already in tomorrow somewhere um and so that's like later tomorrow anyways you know what i'm talking about uh michael what are you doing on your creative session tomorrow or well, you know today what? for somebody that's that's the question everybody wants an answer to including myself <laughs> so no i've got a few i've got a couple ideas i'm tossing around and so i'll, I'll uh i should i'll be tweeting sometime this afternoon with kind of a, an example of what i'm going to be working on and it will be i'll be doing it tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific, so yeah. Cool, so same time, same bat channel. Tune yep. in if you want to check out what Michael's secret project is. Um, we also have a workshop this week. Now, we're changing up the workshop um, just a little bit. Again, um, if you've been around for a while, you know that we've already gone from one workshop style to another. Now we're changing it up one more time. Uh, we're going to strip back the amount of people that are on the workshop um, so that we can do a little more focused stuff. Um, and, um, this week JC is going to be talking about meshes, um, how to create meshes, a lot of the things that you want to keep in mind as you're working with meshes. 
Um, and I'm not sure if there's going to be anybody on the live stream with you, JC. Anyways, we'll talk about that. We'll get all that situated. Um, but that will be Thursday morning, which is uh, an hour earlier than this live stream. So that'll yeah. be 8 a.m. Pacific. Um, uh, what's that? 10 a.m. Central and then, you know, uh, 11 Eastern and then, you know, uh, everybody in Europe. I'm sorry. I'm horrible with. We've already talked about the Internet. <laughs> I'm terrible with it. Um, all right, so that is the streaming schedule for this week. Uh, let's talk about what has been released to the app over the past uh, week or so. Um, first of all, we got Marquee Zoom. So if you hold Z while dragging, um, you can Marquee Zoom. Um, you can use Command K now to search artboard names. So along with searching your files, you're also searching... Um, the artboard names, there's a new share, publish, and download button. You'll notice that's uh, right next to the design and animate mode uh, toggle. Um, you can now manage your previous uh, share links and embed codes using the redesigned share link UI. And there are also keyboard shortcuts to jump ahead, uh, jump the playhead uh, back to the start. If you want more information on this and you want to see how all this works, there's a great Twitter thread that um, Guido posted on the Rive Twitter. So you can check that out, see little video examples of all the stuff that's been added. Um, and one thing that didn't make that tweet, um, but Laura has been testing out and seems really happy about, we've got some new Lottie import improvements um, so now some of those Lottie files that, um, weren't working as well before are going to be working a lot better now. Laura, do you want to talk about that at all? Hello, I, I'm getting like a bit, bit lags. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, yes, I was testing it. It's just, uh, you drop the, your file, your chosen file in, uh, in, in an airport that it's already created and it will instantly create an asset airport from that. Um, also create uh, the airport with the animation. It's, it's really, it's really amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's still up. Let's go ahead and just study. Okay. So right. is that, does that take the, like a comp, a composition that's in an After Effects file? Is that kind of what it brings in as a nested artboard? Yeah, it already, you already group everything, even if you don't have anything grouped inside your, your file in after. So it will create a comp, but also it will create a nested artboard inside uh, the artboard you already have in the right file. Cool. It's pretty cool. Awesome. So like uh, Laura said, if you want to check out the nested artboard updates, you should jump in, or not the nested artboard updates, but the Lottie updates, you should jump in and check it out for yourself. Um, it seems like um, our engineers have done some wizardry to make that better. And speaking of wizardry, I want to bring on, uh, uh, pass it over to Zach, who's got some announcements for uh, some runtime updates. Yeah, so one of our runtimes, React Native, uh, is getting a big update, uh, hopefully this week. Um, just nailing down a few little details here and there to um, basically get it more updated so that it supports the latest features um, and and has a kind of a better developer experience. And so um, I know there's been some bug reports and things like that uh, of that nature um, on Discord and the likes. And so hopefully this major update, which will be bumping to version 4.0, um, will will help alleviate some of these um, pain points that are kind of cropping up. Um, so yeah, we've been hard at work um, trying to, to get that upgraded. Um, for those of you who may be unfamiliar, the React Native runtime runs on top of our native iOS and Android runtimes. And so with that comes a little bit of uh, coordination to make things play nicely all together. Um, especially with the React Native environment. And so we're super excited to finally get some uh, major updates there. So stay tuned um, on the React Native runtime and watch the repo if uh, you're interested in that. Ooh, sounds fancy. All right, so new runtime stuff coming up soon. Um, there's other things that I want to announce that I can't announce. Um, 
Yeah, everybody on here knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, see, I knew you guys know. Yeah, um, hopefully we'll be able to announce some of those things uh, in maybe a week or two. Um, and uh, some of y'all out in the audience may be excited about it. I know I am super excited about it. Um, all right, let's take a look at some community animations. There's been a lot of cool stuff this week. Um, uh, let's go with uh, someone who we showed off their work last week. Um, is making another appearance on the stream. Uh, we got a cool animation from Zuzuza. Gosh, I really hope yeah. I'm saying your name right. Um, so this is an interactive, but I think this pencil animation is um, a really well done animation. Uh, yeah, I like the little pencil character. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, I love the, the idea of the loop. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Give it a little, give it a little thumbs up. All right, so this one's really cool. We've got another one um, from someone I don't think we've showed on stream before, and they have an easy name, so I'm not scared to say this one. Um, Tef Design or T E F Design. I'm not really sure uh, which one it is. If you're watching, let me know. Uh, they created a progress bar, which is seems fairly simple until you hit that 100% number, and then it turns into a mouth, and then goes into a check mark. I think it's a really cool, um, yeah, really cool interaction. Um, really good understanding of how the progress bar is set up. Um, this is this is uh, super sweet. I'm gonna drop another, um, drop another fire emoji on. That. By the way, I really like your little fire emoji, JC. <laughs> That was my favorite. I use that one all the time. Well, what, what kind of app do you guys think this would work in? Like uh, this, well, uh, this loading indicator, or this progress indicator? Like a dentist app. Like if you're booking a, a dentist yeah. appointment and you got to load like a long list of uh, uh, dental specialists. Yeah, that's a good one. I would expect <laughs> nice. this to pop up. Yeah. One, one thing you can do is when finish the load and appears the mouse, the mouse say dancing like uh, the loading is finished or <laughs> your file is... <laughs> <laughs> that would be That's wild. Cool, yeah. yeah, this is really cool. What, what do you think it'd go in, Gordon? No, I couldn't think of anything. That's why I asked. <laughs> <laughs> it could go on a karaoke app. I mean, if you put a little microphone in there, you know, yeah. loading yeah. the song. Yeah. I think, I think it could be in a... You can find a spot for this. Or just anywhere <laughs> where you weren't expected, like yes. where you least expected, just to like be. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best. Just totally unrelated to yeah. mouths at all. Yeah, that'd be like, great. Like your banking app or something. Make, you made a payment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> hey, banking makes me smile, so <laughs> yeah. I think this fits. Well, it was a good job by uh, Tef Design. We'll have to see more from them. And uh, oh man, actually we've got a double appearance on the show today. Do we have a do we have a double appearance like sound like a ding ding? Um, Zuzuza, we've got another animation from them. Uh, this one is really cool. Um, maybe somebody can. Ooh, uh, hang on, we're we're back to not sharing screens efficiently. Here we go. We got it. Um, maybe somebody explain how this was set up because this is pretty wild. I think it yeah. looks super. Cool. They yeah. shared on Twitter that, well, I think it was originally Lottie and then someone posted it and then it was 16 kilobytes and then someone changed something and now it's 8 kilobytes. Holy. Damn. Yeah. That's awesome. Don't put yeah. me on the numbers. I, I think that's that's what the, the matrix were. It, I, see if so I, I did... Twit. I did that helix, like the helix loader mm -hmm. thing. It looks like you could do something. I mean, it looks like you could take... You, just one animation of one of those and then duplicate them across and offset the time and then maybe some mixing too. I know that Zuzuza uses mixing quite a bit, like really some yeah. complicated like animation mixing with nested artboards. So maybe for like the distance, uh, yeah, I don't know. Cause it looks like some of them aren't moving, like the ones closer to us are moving more. I don't know. It's, it's a neat effect. Yes, I think it's really cool. Uh, yeah, and I don't mean this as a knock at all, but I wish that and, and they might still do it. I don't know. Um, I wish my my Windows machine still had the old school um, 
uh, screensavers so that I could put this as a screensaver um, and then just not do anything ever and just watch it. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> All right. So that's the end of, uh, oh, wait, is it, is it, hang on, is it? Uh, no, it's not the end of uh, community animations. We've got one more that was uh, posted on Twitter, and this user must have taken some of uh, JC's mesh advice to heart. Um, I think they made a really cool um, animation here. Do, do, do. And this one's, oh boy, I don't know if I'm going to say this one. Uh, oh boy. I'm just going to let y'all read the name. Um, here you go. Uh, yeah. Nice little lava cube. Um, the meshing on this looks exactly like what you've been uh, showing off, JC. Yeah, exactly. And I like that they added the uh, red glow at the bottom as it gets closer to the ground. Yeah, this is a good detail, exactly. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the little pieces, that's... Yeah, me, that makes it. Oh yeah, like thousands. yeah, and the reflection of the light in the, in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice little details. <clears throat> um, uh, okay, uh, I really want to try and say their name, but I just put all um, all um, Galovia. Is that close? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, great job. We hope to see more work from you. Um, and if we do, we'll share it on this train. Okay. That's, that's, I mean, that's the end of the schedule right there. We're in, we're in free flow territory now. Um, I'll open it up to the chat. If y'all have any questions, now's the time to ask. Uh, and we can get to those straight away. If not, um, I'm either going to talk about Last of Us, which I have not seen the latest episode of. So I'm a little bit behind on there. Uh, yeah, don't look at me like that, Zach. Um, or, <laughs> or we can talk about something else or maybe look at <clears throat> some animations that we've been working on. Um, we're going to let it sit here for a second and just mellow. Free flow territory is where I get a little nervous. Ooh, where it's unscripted, it's unplanned. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. Probably me saying something dumb. I don't know. I don't know. I'll try. I'll try and beat you to it. No, let's not play that game. <laughs> <laughs> Playing chicken. Wait. Check this. Okay. No. All right. Let me. Uh, uh, Guys, we got internet issues. It's lagging. Um, hmm. Let me see. <clears throat> could be. Totally could be. Or it could not be. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, it looks good for me. I don't know. Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> but perhaps it's, we, we are very still, so... It looks like lagging. Ah, yeah, that could be but, true but too. But it's not real. It's like we we are like no no blinking. Dura. No, no, we have we actually do have a rule against blinking on stream. Um, it's first of all very unprofessional. You should never blink um, in the presence <laughs> of anybody. Um, and secondly, I don't really have a secondly. I'm I'm actually done with that. Are you going to demo something, Robert? I don't know. Maybe. Should I? Oh. I, I? I can show something. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, and everybody can decide whether or not I should share. Uh, this has popped up a lot. Oh, sorry. This is maybe too much. I'll, I'll just remove it for now. Uh, a lot of people have asked, um, like, you know, around some examples to change color dynamically. And um, although we don't technically 
uh, support like a convenient API to do it. Uh, people have been able to do it for some of the run, run times. Um, especially on Flutter, it's uh, it's easier to do. Um, but it's it's kind of doing it in a way that you say, hey, this color should be this, and then you do it once. But uh, if you wanted to do it a bit more dynamically, uh, so for example, each time an animation occurs, maybe you want to do something different each time, um, you'd need to delve into a bit of the lower level APIs. Um, so one particular question that came up was, uh, how can I set the color for an animation if the opacity changes? So that someone created uh, this question and issue on GitHub saying that if uh, the opacity changes of the uh, color you're changing, then it overrides like the, the value that you set it to. And again, that's because like we technically don't support this uh, yet. Uh, but you can uh, do this with code. You'll just need to go one layer deeper. Uh, so I, I created this example where uh, you can kind of just copy paste this and it should work. Um, uh, but you can also extend the code and look at it in more detail or maybe modify it in a way that uh, makes sense to you. But uh, what this code is doing, so this is this is a Rive animation and um, basically you, you look for a shape's name and you look for the full name for that shape. So this will just require you to be explicit in your naming. Uh, in this instance, uh, this one is named uh, shape, right? box shape one, and it's named uh, box full one. And then you can change the color. So if we make this green and just restart, then it works. And the way you do this is, if you're familiar with Flutter, uh, you need to create a custom arrive render object, which is happening here. And um, each time you basically set the uh, component or you update the render object, uh, you basically do the check to look for where this shape and where this fill is. And uh, this is what people have been doing in the past. The only difference is, is uh, this is a bit more dynamic. And it's more dynamic because uh, we are updating the color in this draw method over here. So uh, what this means is you can basically do something each frame. And in this instance, uh, it's setting the color, but it's also getting the current alpha value of the color, so the opacity, and it's, it's setting that as well. So that will allow you to actually change the color with a particular alpha value. If we were to remove this, then it would just be green. And that's the issue that uh, some people ran into. But yeah, this is a, I think this is a, an easy enough example to dig into the lower level API for Flutter. And uh, you can definitely extend this to do other cool things. Uh, so for example, following a target or injecting a Flutter widgets into the Rive uh, or between different Rive objects or something like that. Uh, yeah, the sky's the limit for this if, if you wanted to do more advanced things. That's awesome. Was, was this posted somewhere? Yeah, I'll send the link. Is it on the Super Duper Rive app? The Awesome Rive? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, it's, it's already up Thanks. on Awesome Rive, so you can find it there. Uh, do we have a link to Awesome Rive in case folks out there don't have it? Yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, while Gordon is um, grabbing that, I want to show off a couple animations for uh, that I'm working on for tutorials that I'll be doing later this week, next week, in the coming weeks for a creative session. Um, so the first one. Is this dude right here? Um, this is my Rogue Runner, even though I accidentally named it Rouge Runner, um, which Rouge is also, I think, I think, I think, uh, French for red, I, I believe. I'm not 100% positive on that. Um, and we're going to make a character. Uh, I'll show you how to set all of it up um, along with the state machine make a character go in between running 
idling, and do a couple attack animations. Oh, we need to restart that. There we go. Why isn't that restarting? That's weird. And this one's also here. So one, two, and then we'll hook it up in a state machine so that we can switch back and forth between everything. We'll also make it uh, face opposite directions. Do both of the little attack animations. And then eventually there's going to be a uh, jump in there as well. So that's one of the tutorials I'll be working on soon. Um, another one is this one right here with a much more updated character. Um, this is sort of the proof of concept for it. But there were some questions about how do you make a character rotate? Um, not necessarily um, in three dimensions, but rotate around a single axis so you could have a character that faces multiple directions. Um, and for this, I've got a little proof of concept for it so we can set it up where the character can face down, left, uh, oh wait, what, uh, I think it's that one, up and right, while also doing uh, movements like uh, walking, attacking, dying, running, um, all the different things that you would expect out of a, a, a character like this. And um, yeah, I, I don't know the numbers set up here in a way that I like. Um, but anyways, we'll be doing that. And just to give you a little hint, not a little hint, but just kind of reveal how it works. Um, we're using uh, nested artboards to achieve all that, putting it all onto one main artboard, and then um, setting up a main state machine that can um, control everything. So look out for those tutorials in the next couple of weeks. Um, I promise this character won't look as bad. Um, I think the one that I'm working on now looks pretty cool. There's still some things to fix up on it, um, but we'll save that for another time. I could totally see that being used in like a game or something. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll have the possibility to, to do something like that. But um, for now, I just want to show everybody how all this is done so that um, when you can implement this kind of stuff into a game, you're ready for it. Cool. Yeah, so that's my show and tell time. Uh, did anybody bring anything else to school to, to share? Um, favorite pencil? Um, yeah, I want to share uh, something. It's all but because uh, we see the mouth in that loader. I want to show oh, yeah, the cool. setup. Yeah, you, you can set up the mouth wherever you want, but I think this is this is something interesting. Um, OK, uh, you can see I have different controls. Uh, oops, I have different control for the mouth. Uh, here, for example, if I move this, you can see that when I move this control, these two control move too. And if I change oops, the scale, you can see that effect to these bonds. So my idea in this setup is use a few controls only to make the different uh, poses of, of the mouth. So how I work this is that this, uh, each control of the mouth here have a constraint of the scale of this. So when I change the scale of this, all these uh, controls copy that. And each bone have this movement too. I can change the scale and change the wave. So to do that, the shape in this case is bending uh, that way. The vertex and handlets is uh, the same color of the bone, 100%. So this way you can create a simple animation like this. <laughs> you can create a deformation like this using this this control. So it's maybe you you don't cover all the poses of the mouse, but you can create a lot of. Uh, pauses and create something fun. So, yeah, this is the thing. You can find this file in the community if you can check the, the rig and how it works. Um, yeah. Zach, we need to create like a. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so actual talking. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like a good rig to, 
to do all the like lip syncing and stuff with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I don't know why, but I also just randomly thought of like that as like an opera singer kind of cartoon animation. <laughs> the, like the classic know. one with the lady with the with the horn ears and the, the long <laughs> ponytail. Yeah. Yeah. Why does it sound like something that's already in the community? I'm not sure that it is, but it was on a Bugs Bunny cartoon one time. I remember that no. my my days of growing up in the forties or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Bugs Bunny was on Cartoon Network for a long time. Yeah, there's a lot we could do with that. That's fun. All right, so we're still in show and tell time, um, and we're also in questions time. So if you have any, make sure you uh, drop them in the chat. And if not, um, Pedro, you got something? Me? Oh, I don't know. It looked like you were looked like you were ripping and ready. I I can't. I can show what I'm working this week. It's almost done, but I yeah. mean, if you want to, no I'm, pressure. Okay, I'm making a. Um, it's not finished because I have to to finish the text. But uh, setting, set screen, uh, all right, editor, there, there it is. Hey, Whoa. I was thinking about you know this. Um, a gotcha thing when you have to select like the cars or the lights or whatever or put a, mm -hmm. a very long code i was thinking that it would be more interesting that you have to prove that you are <laughs> a human or at least a frog to access um by doing that you, ha you have to to catch the flies so i make this <laughs> <laughs> and the idea is when you catch the three flies, it's difficult, eh? Oh, then cool. the, con <laughs> the continue button is active. So yeah. I think that would be better that just select the, the cars or the bus in, in the photographs. And I made that when you hit continue, it resets so you can play again with the... <laughs> this is so cool, man. This is going to be... The next step in CAPTCHA uh, human yeah. verification right here. Yeah. Oh, I love how the tongue is rigged up. Does it, like, you can click anywhere and it? Yeah, that's awesome. Yes, I made uh, that, that idea that uh, I talked uh, talk with you before is is that it's like uh, you have um, the idea is, is this. I have here the, the it's just a trim path and you can... Um, can move the this is the origin of the dream path and this is the end of the dream path so i have an animation that just mm. makes the dream path go on uh, yeah. and the idea is when you click it it stop following so oh, that's awesome. ah, this is, yeah, this is that's great really cool. yeah this is great yeah so and the flies has a hitbox so when when they are hit you add this this animation so if you go to the to the uh, animation of the tongue is I, I think it's here. So here it is. It's just this animation of the yeah of the trim path going back and forward and and that's it. I made a little uh, deformation in the trim path with a so it's not um, straight. a straight line. Yeah. Yes. To, to, to break it a little bit, so I think it's more a more interesting shape. But yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. I, I like the deformation in, in the end of the tongue. No. Yes, it's uh, sometimes it's not. Uh, it depends on how far is it is. Ah, okay, okay. But uh, but yes, it, it broke the the idea of. For example, here is very yeah. straight, but when it's closer, you can see mm -hmm. that that it makes a, a little curve and. It breaks the effect that is something fixed, but it's just that is the the vertex moving a little bit, so it breaks the the, the line. And I well, like especially the how how they die. The yeah. Flies. That yeah. Is... I, I love his offset blinking. That's awesome. I mean, that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> so great. this, I think, uh, I will share this. Uh, suppose I suppose tomorrow or perhaps. Uh, 
on Thursday, and I pu I'll put the the file on the community so everyone can. So so play if with if you eat the fly, you are not a robot. This is the idea. No? Yes, the, the idea is you, you prove that you are not a robot because you are a frog. <laughs> uh, at least you are a frog. Uh, that that yeah? it's it's more legal than uh, a robot. <laughs> yeah. I think the the. the... <laughs> The IAs uh, cannot do that, at least uh, for the moment, because they, they will find that so stupid that I think <laughs> it's not compute for them. It's amazing. It's so cool. Yeah. Wow. What's that is the community? I'm going to remix that. That's super cool. Yeah. That's such a fun, that's such a fun interaction. Like, yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, really clever. That is a captcha. Like, yeah. 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 Revolutionizing something I never thought would get revolutionized. <laughs> you don't like finding the buses and the pictures. You don't like finding <laughs> no. See, there's here's the problem. It's like the most boring thing in the world. It's like find the the, the fi nice. uh, pick the cars in these photographs, please. I just I never draw. get I never get easy ones. Mine are always like uh, find the boat. And so there's like a big marina and there's a bunch of boats in it, but there's also like a, like a jet ski. And in my mind, like a jet ski is not a boat, but they set it up and it's a boat. And I'm just, dude, it happens all the time. Um, <laughs> sometimes they're like, okay, uh, pick the dromedaries out of the picture. And it's a bunch of camels and then one dromedary. And it's like, how do you, how can you even tell the difference between the two? I, I, I think it needs to be changed. I, I think it's, 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 uh... Or oh, Robert, maybe you need to update your firmware. Kind of sounds like you're struggling. <laughs> <laughs> it could be true as well. Um, or like you know, pick the red lights. Um, yeah, this is the, the pick up, mm. Yeah, I, I have, I have, I have a hard time with those. That's why I don't drive much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think we might hang out for a couple more minutes and then uh, go ahead and get scooting. Um, so we'll give you all a couple more minutes to drop in some questions and um, and then we're going to get out of here. So for all of you who missed the beginning, uh, just a, a quick recap. Um, JC did a, a creative stream last week. You can find that on YouTube. There's a link in the chat already. Uh, we've got a creative stream tomorrow that Michael is running. It's a secret project. He won't tell anybody what it is. Um, so I think it's going to be awesome. Um, you have to have top secret clearance just to find out about it uh, beforehand. Um, we all know about it, but, but y'all don't. So missing out. Uh, so be here for that tomorrow. Uh, same time, uh, same place. And then on Thursday, JC will be doing a mesh workshop. Uh, yep. Going over a lot of really cool tips. He actually ran the workshop for us on one of our meetings and it was like super informative. So uh, we, we got a lot out of it. So I hope y'all get a lot out of it as well. So be sure to check that out on um, Thursday. Um, anybody, anybody, you know, got anything before we get out of here? I have a question that I'm embarrassed to ask, but I don't know how you do, uh, Colors in the um, in the path. How how you show how JC show it was read the mouth that you have the bones and then the colors assigned to to mm -hmm. the path, like the way you, I don't know this makes sense. You have like a, a yellow bone and then the the path is. Uh, way to that bone, and you have that bone colors. How do you do that? How do you think I can? Um, I think that might have just been a visual bug because I don't oh. think we can change the colors yet. Ah. Yeah. Uh, you mean when the bone have the color? Yes. When, uh, when I, uh, I outside to the uh, vertex uh, mode and the bone still have the color, is what you say. No, when you're on the vertex and the vertex has the colors of the bone. Uh, this, this happens only when you wait 
vertex. If you don't wave vertex, you don't see the color. This is what was it? Are you talking about the weight, the actual weight tool? Like when you toggle that on, it shows the. Oh. Yeah, I. But I don't get the color, and I wait. I might be doing something wrong. Ah, ah. One moment, one moment. Let me, but uh, the the weight tool, you mean? Yes. When you see the vertex with the colors of your bone. I think she, when Chelsea showed, yeah, here you could see it. So you mean here I select the path this. Is this Laura? Sorry, uh, if you go into if you go to edit the, the shape here and now yes. select that. Oh yeah yeah ah, yeah. Okay. Using the W key, you can activate the uh, oh. this the way exactly, and you can see what vertex the color of the different vertex that is waiting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was right in front of my face. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah, it's, it's, you you can wait. You can wait vertex. If you select these three, for example, I can see here the different values. So I can change the value and you can do whatever. But with this, it's more easy because you can see here how it works. Yeah. And the other thing is if you select the bone here, you can drag and change and don't need to go to here. So if I want to add more green, I can drag here and change the three. So, but yeah, this, this, is the, this is the thing, using this tool. Wait, wait. The drag thing, I, I didn't know about that. What what are you doing for that? Yeah, <clears throat> when you want to add more uh, uh, influence of other bonds, you can, uh, for example, in this, in this, you can add here, no, using the value, mm -hmm. or if you have the color sel select, you can uh, click and drag here. Ah, here, click and drag. Yeah. Uh, in Whatever place. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And change, for example. I was I always to... clicking on the circle. Um, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Can select this and now change. Like this. It, that makes sense. It's more visual. For example, for me, uh, uh, normally I, I don't, in this case of, of uh, weights, I don't, I never be exactly, I mean, I don't, try to have ex the exact value. I'm working more uh, visual. I mean, I like to select and this, and this is the middle. I don't care if this 40 or 50 in this case. If I need be exactly, I use the value, but normally I use this because it's more visual and, and that's it. But yeah, this is the thing. I like to use this one. Um... Yeah meshes to see kind of how the, all the influence of the mesh are yeah it's, it's good because uh let me show you other example a moment more complex example uh if i can find here beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 let me a second Uh, For me, the interesting thing is when you uh, make a pose in a in a test timeline, and you can move that and um, see the change in the deformation made. Yeah, I I find that. This is a, a, a way to, to find the solution. Sometimes when you make a curve and it's not working, you can make that change in the timeline and, and look, try to, to, to put that values. In. Yeah, because all those waiting changes save from uh, animate mode across to design mode, which is really helpful. 
Yeah, I never thought of using like a test timeline and setting all like maybe your key mm -hmm. poses for like an arm and then yeah, it's, I, yeah. I usually use that or the <clears throat> or the state machine thing because you can mm -hmm. use that as a reset. This is a good example in this complete mesh, for example, uh, using the the system the the weight tool, I can see easily how is weight this this character putting these uh, bonds. So you can see here that I use him for this deformation only two bonds, this blue and the yellow, and depends of the animation. Uh, this part is more weighting to yellow, and this part is more weighting to to blue. No. You can see here, for example, how it works the deformation. I just want a T-shirt with the headless uh, astronaut. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the good thing about this this tool. No, it's more easy to. If I work in this way, I need to select each of these bond to each of these vertex to to see how how it works. So with this, I can see perfectly what is the influence. Oh wait, so this shows you like the total influence. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So I, here, for example, I can see that this this part is weighting 100% to uh, yellow because mm. the bone is here in this part, is in the top of this suit. And the bottom part that is in, in the bottom is more weighting with the blue. So if I move this bone, they should move in one way. This is the thing. Yeah. All right. Well, nice little, nice little uh, informative tidbit. Um, if you haven't used the weight tool, give it a try. Um, all right. We got a question. I want to rotate a spoon in circles inside of a bowl on drag. Uh, on drag and move. How can we do it inside the state machine? Circles inside a bowl. I think mm. IK would probably be what you'd want. Yeah, to use. exactly. Mm. And then uh, Robert just share. We just published a drag and drop, which would help you set up the drag part of that, because I think that's what yeah. you'd want to do. Yeah, the tricky thing might be keeping the the spoon looking right as it rotates. But yeah, it would, it would involve some kind of group, uh, an IK constraint. A rotation constraint, I would think. Uh, JC looks uh, like he's cooking. Yeah, I, I have this. I, I, I guess it is what you mean. Uh, up, 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 up. Here and it's, it's using a, a, a key. So I can drag and you can see that this is moving. Yeah. Is this where? No, this is the. Seems like it. Yeah, if I move this bond. Exactly. Yeah, and if your spoon was top down, then you wouldn't have a problem with the with the angle or anything like that. It would yeah. just be moving around your bowl. And JC, are you using a distance constraint to keep the to to keep the control here? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you no, know, if if I move, oops, outside, maybe I can broken the. Yeah, it's only to keep the position here. See, the other thing is try to 
this don't have, but try to limit the uh, movement from here to here only, and don't make this. And I remember try that. It's not this file, but I remember try that using the limits in the in the constraint. But the limits in the constraint is difficult to use in in this part. And the other thing I did and works was uh, ah, here, but I don't know why this is not active. This shape, this is cutting in this uh, way, is because this part is the detection. So the idea was, I don't know what is not working. The idea was when the cursor is here, the tracking doesn't work. Oh, is this it because way... you're not in the state machine? No, no, this still work. no, no. Oh yeah, huh? yeah. This is very old. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. It's working now. Yeah, I'm old man. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is so. So this is the way I fix it. Is using instead of using a, a limit in the constraint that is more difficult to 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 create. Is using the detection and cut this part so this way. Uh, When the cursor is in that part, a moment now, in that part doesn't work. So I have this this limit. Yeah. This is on the community, isn't it? No, no, because I no. Uh, I have it, it, this is the old file. I have other file more complex, and I I want to add uh, different examples in the same file. So yeah. Cool. Um. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully, Gentender, that that helps you out. Um, Jeff also makes a good point that you could do it with a nested artboard, um, setting the spoon up in different positions and scrubbing through that timeline. Um, it'll take a little bit. It'll take a little bit of work with, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably you can do now with the nested about that way. Uh, you probably have to do something with like. Pedro's setup where you have a bunch of hitboxes that scrub through a number that also scrubs your mm -hmm. timeline. Yeah. If because, you want to yeah. do it on drag and drop. Exactly. Because if you want to do using only the value with the remap option and then instead of board, that's it, you have the, the, the thing. But if you want drag and drop, yeah, the other problem is you need some boxes to activate the different the different part. Yeah. Always depends what you want to do. Uh, yeah, you have these different options. I, I would because... say the oh, go for it, Pedro. No, in a, I have. I, I was thinking in in a lot of uh, uh, apps when you have this kind of control. Uh, usually, it's like you click and it doesn't matter that you are over the. It's like you can usually. It's like you can go up and down and this make the yeah, and that's it. Or uh, left to right, for example. Yeah. I mean, is uh, when I've been thinking, I in apps for sound, I think they had that because they usually make the like the real uh, hardware they have. But I think this is the the behavior. It's like you don't have to to be on the on the on wheel. The, to, on the thing, yeah. Yes, it's a, you click and can go. Even you have the option to use the the wheel of the mouse to. Mm to go up and there. It's like just to have a value of one, uh, 0 to 100, for example, and, and go in that value. So there is a, 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 a lot of approaches. Yeah, that. this way you can do using, in this case, you can do using the, the uh, limit in the in the constraint, in the mm -hmm. Y. So when you move, doesn't matter if you would move whatever, the, the control that follow the, the volume only moving in the, in the Y axis. Um, yeah, it's working. You can do it, yeah. Uh. Yeah, I think if you want to try the nested artboard route, you'll still need the drag and drop tutorial. There's a thing. Uh, there's a video on that. Um, you'll need the nested artboard trick that JC and Pedro have been showing off. Uh, I think we looked at those in last week's live stream. I think yeah. we looked at those. Yeah. yeah, so so check out last week's live stream. There's a demo of um, Wiley Coyote in there with a head turn, and that's set up on that. And then you'd have to um, hook it up to a blend state and then use, like, Pedro's setup where the blend state um, or it has all the 
the hitboxes that can throw off different numbers to increase the value of the number input on your blend state. So um, there's a bunch of different things to, to look into for the little parts of it, but um, but I think that'd be a cool interaction. Yeah, one, one thing we should work on maybe with Zach and Gordon is uh, figuring out a way to uh, get like the drag um, interactions working on like a tab on a outside of the editor right now. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you publish one of these to the community that has like a drag and drop interaction that works, like do, I, I think it's due to the way like the web is like pages scroll, like set up, sets up the scroll that it won't function. Like you have to load on mobile, your, right? Yeah. Like if you try yeah. and do it on, on your phone, it won't work. I even tried like dropping it in like a framer site and doing like a fixed, um, and that doesn't work. So I think it's still the way it's detecting the drag is yeah. it's like trying to scroll the page. So maybe we could come up with like some kind of template or something that you could actually get that stuff working properly um, on the, uh, like, I don't know if we could do it in the community, but you'd have to probably do some code sandbox or something, but. but perhaps kind of a full screen when you are, for example, watching a video on YouTube that you have the option to full screen that, that so it has not a scroll is, is fixed. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, that could work. The Tinder's requesting more um, tutorials on the low level uh, API stuff. So um, that sounds super dense, um, <laughs> but very fun. <laughs> Maybe one of these yeah. days when I get past the drop into pubspec.yaml part, I'll, uh, I'll watch those videos. I don't know why that makes me laugh every time I hear that pubspec.yaml just does. I don't know. <laughs> this is a cool sounding uh, thing. But what, we've got constraints and... Um, Developers have snack bars and pub specs and tailwinds. Dude, the terminology there is like so much cooler. We need to step up our naming game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll call it there. Um, got about three minutes to spare. And, you know, if you get a last minute question in now, congratulations. We'll answer it. But if not, um, we are going to be, not all of us, Michael's going to be back uh, tomorrow, um, JC on Thursday, and we'll all be back next Tuesday. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, make sure, if you're not already, uh, go join the Discord. So if you have any questions that you didn't get to ask today, you can ask them there, and uh, one of us or somebody in the community will answer that for you. Um, and you can you can request features and um, get your entire family to upvote them for you. Um, other than that, I think that's it. Uh, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Cool. I guess okay. see y'all in the next one. Yep. Bye. 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 Bye.